So over the past couple of weeks, I've been trying with very little success to try to get in contact with the people over at Hotbox who do one of the quote unquote better parties in London that's sort of done under the premise of being invite only, behind closed doors, no pictures allowed, um, party that essentially is more catered towards the LGBTQ queer side, gay side of the scene. But as I've told you in many previous episodes of the show, um, that side of our scene, especially in dance music, is the best when it comes to club culture, when it comes to music, when it comes to DJs, when it comes to vibes, ambiance, community, all that sort of stuff. It's fucking great. Once you get past the somewhat pretentious, hipstery, too cool for school side of things, usually nine times out of ten, actually, I've actually found some really safe, decent people from the times I've been to Budokai. I've been to Hole, I've been to Inferno, and they've got this system where you have to actually um, enter in the code to actually have the ability to actually purchase tickets. And But you obviously can contact them directly and they can basically tell you. So I contacted them via DMs, no reply. No, first DMs, first, second email, no reply. And then when I finally did get speaking to somebody, the person was like, oh yeah, hey, thanks for reaching out, good um you know give us a back no do you know somebody or a code who can recommend something along that lines right and obviously i'm a solo raver i don't know any of these people right and i don't really try to like build community or relationships with people i just go to things i like to go to and kind of duck out that's kind of how i dealt with all things whether it's going to Berghain, whether it's going to fucking smaller underground type events i'm not really one that kind of gets into the whole you know trying to find friends in this sort of stuff i might add the other people here on instagram but i'm not gonna use you as a name to kind of get in at a place that's f- losery stuff for me in my opinion and again sony is just a part it's not that deep so i thought hey let me just add a bit of spiel here about knowing one of the people involved with running hotbox right a person called Be- becky strook and i thought hey I've, I've seen this person play at fold i've seen them play at inferno i'm very familiar with their sets i've listened to some of their mixes online read some of their interviews I'm, i know who this person is so i kind of read that stuff and i was thinking to myself when i was writing it on my dms why am i doing this for once in my life because usually when i get those type of replies from jobs i'll oh, do this do that i just like you know what I'm not going to bother. I just kind of ignore it, send to bin and kind of keep it moving. But for the one time I thought, you know what? Let me just try and do what the normal person would do and try and flipping fill out this flipping thing, reply how maybe I think they want me to reply or maybe, you know, essentially prove that I get what they're about and shit, which is insane, really, to be honest, because I could have said anything really and truly. There's no real understanding or gauge on who I am as a person based on some of the words I might be able to say on the social media and shit. But anyway, regardless, we let it lie. So I went to say that I did it. And since I sent them that message, I think like two or three weeks ago, I've not seen a flipping reply. Not one reply I've seen since that time. And the funny thing about it is that I first thought I got left on scene. They haven't even opened my message. And to me, it's one of two things. It's a bad thing and a good thing. It's a bad thing because I think it kind of displays how unfortunately the London scene just isn't conducive to somebody trying to get involved and do their thing, especially if they're not somebody that's a part of the lgbtq queer scene in that side of things like if you don't identify a certain way in this country in this scene unfortunately you just don't get the same amount of welcoming that you probably should be getting because they they always say about being in an inclusive space about being welcoming to all different types of people promoting diversity but they want only a certain type of diversity if you're not gay if you're not queer if you don't present a certain way they don't want you in the scene for some reason they think if you're not those things and you maybe describe yourself as hetero or cis that most likely you have certain beliefs that don't align to theirs automatically they can't be somebody that could come in that could represent or you know present the way that i present and not be aligned with what they do they'd have to be an op they have to be somebody that has to be kept apart or kept on the outside which is odd because like i said i'm a little bit of a lone soldier most of the raves and stuff that i go to i usually go to on my own i found out about these things because i'm interested in the music because i give a fuck is why i fucking know about this sort of stuff i obviously care to a level to know about these smaller operations and shit so you'd think that'd be enough right to get me into the door but no but then again on the flip side it's also a good thing similar to like the skateboarding scene from the fucking from the start of things if i remember correctly they've always been incredibly possessive and selective and guarded about the scene when it comes to skateboarding compared to bmx compared to fucking rollerblading it's always been very very sort of like closed clicky 
vibe checky, all that sort of stuff. I'm sure most of you who've been to skate shops over the world, especially around the world, especially skate your own shops, can attest to feeling vibed out by your local skate store, by your scene, by people associated with it and bloody blah, 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 blah. It's sort of like the, the kind of route of passage to kind of go through in order to kind of feel welcomed in the scene. But sometimes it does lead to good results because essentially however many years on from skateboarding being invented, it's now still a little bit of a underground um subculture type of thing right it's still not as commodified and sold out as other things or no it's not sold out obviously because it's an olympics but it's just not as like cringy and corny as stuff like bmx and rollerblading and even sometimes even stuff like fixed gear and stuff it's got to a point where you know you can get probably fixed gear bikes on fucking amazon so it's obviously going to be crazy but i feel like their refusal to engage with me and be a little bit kind of hands you know to keep me at hands distance turn the blind eye ignore me and shit is also a reason why the party is proper successful because there's such hoops to jump through to get in you have to kind of beg and plead obviously i'm not going to beg and plead i sent two messages I'm not sending anyone again so whatever it kind of is what it is i'm not taking it personally but it is kind of interesting to see the whole diversity thing the whole welcoming people into the scene sort of thing isn't really true especially once you get into the underground side of things they really are selective about who they invite it probably is way more discriminatory than going to a soho club because you could actually buy your way into those kind of clubs and get in there if you've got enough money if you've got enough contacts but in these type of places they judge you on your appearance like i might as well just be a white dude i might as well just be like a standard white techno dude with a bald head that wears all black really i might as well look like richie horton because to these guys unless i've got nail polish unless i put lipstick on unless i color my hair a certain way unless i'm wearing a harness all these type of things i'm not a part of their community or crowd which is interesting i'm one of the people i feel like i go out of my way to try to engage and take part in these type of parties that are not especially for me but just to get an understanding of the music and of the scene and to vibe with people other than people that look like myself like i go out of my way to do that sort of thing so you'd imagine that sort of enthusiasm that sort of like commitment to get in on the ground level because i'm a big believer in actually going to experience things with your own eyes and ears and your feet and not just agreeing with what someone else says about the place even if it's good or bad you'd think that'd go a long way to kind of get in a position where i can maybe enter the type of places but it doesn't that also brought me neatly on to this sort of like headline that i saw on ra where it said saffron opens applications to a 2023 to 2024 development program the subtext is bristol-based non-profit will work with four black women trans non-binary music creators on the eight-month program and this immediately made me think this is basically my pecking order when it comes to dance music as a straight black dude i essentially am just above a white straight just because i'm black and just because i come from a quote-unquote you know minority community or whatever it may be i'm still just looked at as a hetero cisgendered basic ass bitch guy um that's just above the white dudes that's essentially how they kind of look at me which is actually interesting because in my head when i go into dance music i always had this idea or nightlife or wherever that maybe in a really fanciful and really naive and really wishful way of thinking we were trying to create our own versions of utopia via the lens of nightlife because essentially with nightlife you could essentially look at it as a way of kind of having the ability to sort of create the community that you would want to see in the world en masse being a promoter being a party organizer being a dj right you get to experience all these different people from all these different parts of the world because you're playing music you get to also be a part of different people from around the world because you're on the dance floor all these type of things right you would imagine that's what i always thought hey let's create this i wouldn't say safe space but let's just create a version of what we'd want to see in the world and you kind of put that stuff out there but you put it out there under the guise of like as long as you're cool as long as you love the music as long as you know what know what this party is about you're down and you're welcome in our club especially if we've got space for you that's what you'd think it would be but over time we've got to the point where and i think i've always had this issue myself is like there's a lot of like negative reactions and feelings around certain people in other scenes like people you know have a lot of rude things to say about people that go to tech house parties people that go to fucking bait commercial things like um tomorrowland and i think that negative feeling around people who choose other types of music or other types of clubs to go to or festivals has led to the thing that we're in now at the moment with me not hearing back from hotbox where 
essentially these places are more so a safe haven and a sort of like refuge for the people that don't want to go to those parties and don't want those people from those parties to come to their space. So we all have these little cliques and clubs where we sort of like band around and make sure that we only are around people that look and act like us and have the same opinions as us, which is to me is fucking crazy because the world at large doesn't exist like that. And most likely, especially if you go to the really inclusive clubs that strive to just have as many people from all over the world as possible on the dance floor, you're going to get a very wide variety of opinions on various different things concerning the world. And that's what you want. Because in the, the day, it's just the music. You want everybody to be connected under this idea of accepting each other for who we are and also just enjoying the music. All the other stuff that happens on the outside that's super divisive, that kind of separates us and bloody blah, 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 that's super judgmental, you throw that away. That's what you'd hope it would be like. But it's not actually like that. It's actually way more discriminatory than a regular club, like I said. 